No problem. Uh, let's do it. Let's, let's roll. roll. Let's roll. Yeah, let's okay, we're rolling. If you want, you can just give a clap um, to sync if you want to do the, um, the afterwards. <laughs> The, the afterwards. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> not, not awkward at all. No. Yeah, we're supposed to look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Welcome to Bo Beats here on YouTube. And we're at the Tom and Synth Reactor 2019. And I have Luke with me, who is a Korg product specialist. And I also have a good friend over here from Molten Modular. I nailed it. Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello, how are you doing? Mr. Uh, Robin Vincent. That's right. That's right. And I sort of pulled this these guys in here because as most of my viewers know, I'm a big Minilogue fan and I just got the XD. Uh, like a week ago and because I you know, had to go to here to Tommen and meet you guys uh, I didn't have that much um, time with it so I did a little unboxing on my channel and I thought we'd take the time to really dive into the new digital oscillator yeah. because it's kind of be bewildering to me <laughs> and yeah and I think it is to a lot of people yeah, yeah. And how do you feel about it like do you have any have you read about it no you know definitely about I mean, it? it's that which I think has tipped me over the edge because I've been you know I'm in an hour and about a polyphonic synthesizer yeah. for a long time because it's an investment it's something you mm. want to get right first sure. time and looking at the original mini log it's like <laughs> but with the digital oscillator it's like well that's a whole other level of interest which could you know I don't know, it just pushes it over that, oh, well, maybe yeah. that's the one kind of level, considering that maybe the the big brother is perhaps out of my range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like that th this is like the, the nice kind of, yeah, middle ground, mm. if you can't afford like the big the big prologue. And yeah, and it does bring in a lot of things from the prologue and the monologue, actually. Mm. So from the prologue, we've got the amazing effects section. Um, we've got a new filter, which mm -hmm. is derived from the prologue. Yeah. Um, we've got the 16 step buttons, which if you remember on the monologue, we only had eight. Yeah. yeah. So even though it was 16 steps, you couldn't see them all at once. So that's really nice. That's brought yeah. from the monologue. The minilogue had 32, right? Steps. Yeah. Uh, it's no 16. No 16 steps. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But only eight buttons. So yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Round, yeah. You so, had to. Uh, but now yeah, it's it. just easier to see yeah, what's yeah, going definitely, on. Definitely. Um, we've changed the um, joystick as well from mm -hmm. the Minilog. So it's now an XY joystick. So you can assign stuff to the Y parameter, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Yeah. Well. And I had, a, I had a viewer ask, and it's like, does it snap back? And it snaps yeah, back. It's, nice, it's beautiful. Yeah. And um, the oscilloscope is larger as well mm -hmm. than the screen from, from the original Minilog. So it's the same size as the Prolog. So yeah. when you're playing, you. It's a lovely waveform. thing to have. I can't stress how lovely it is to have that that going on. I mean, I don't know yeah. what it is. I don't know whether it's a me thing, but <laughs> to be able to see something, I mean, it's the same yeah. with software sense. If I can see something happening, exactly. it reinforces that I think I know what's going on. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a, yeah, and it's I, a I've thing. actually been, you know, the kind of guy who's been kind of joking, like, why why are all the synth nerds, you know, why do you have those big oscilloscopes? Like, what's that about, yeah. really? Is it yeah. like an, is it like an, uh, yeah, just something... Because it looks nice, or does it have like serve really, really serve a purpose? But when I got the mean original Minilog, I really felt like it, it added a layer mm, to what yeah, I was doing. It really does. It's great as well for learning about synthesis. Mm, so if you mm. go to an initialized patch mm. and you just choose your waveform, so now we've just got oscillator one turned mm. up here. Um, we play or wave, yeah, uh, or I'll try and see what that sound looks like. And then once you start shaping it, yeah, it starts changing. You, you learn what pulse width is. I just really love that. Yeah, and I also feel like, for example, when you start to add um, yeah, different types of modulations, like an, an EG, for example, yeah. it's very nice to see it. What actually how it evolves. To yes, sound. exactly. Because it can be sort of a abstract. Mm. Concept? Yeah, no, very much. Yeah, because yeah. it, yeah. I think it was uh, called Mikel from Cap Curio who said like, when you when you work with sound, it's about uh, it's like sculpting. Uh, I mm. often use that analogy as well. But there is also time. Time is an aspect. Yes, S stuff happens over time. Yeah. So that's kind of cool where you can see the gradual change over time. Especially if it's slow, a slow evolving. Yeah, sound. yeah, you exactly. Can really see it happening. Yeah, on it's the, very cool. On very the cool. Uh, oscilloscope there, so. Yeah, so that's nice. So yeah, of course, like the 
to me, uh, also the digital oscillator was kind of bewildering the whole idea because when you have an analog synth, I think for the most part, I, I don't know if you agree with this, Robin, but um, when you talk to people about like digital synths versus analog synths, it's often like analog synths are less versatile, you know, can't do all the, maybe all the bread and butter sounds, less polyphony and that yeah. sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, and you have digital, often, you know, a bit of, better bang for the buck, whatever you say. And mm. I feel like with Minilo, you can take it, you know, you can push it far, but with this one, adding the digital oscillator was kind of interesting to me because it's sort of like an endless possibility. And I love that idea that you yeah. can sort of just lo load stuff into it. Which and is the, really and cool. then merging the two types of synthesis yeah. together is really yeah. interesting as well. So you've got that kind of fat analog s section, if you like, but then you yeah. can add in your, your digital oscillator. So shall we explore it? Yeah, a bit? yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is your multi. It's called the multi-engine. <laughs> so basically, you've got three different types mm. of digital oscillator. So the first one. So again, let's just go back to initialized patch, and I'll just turn up this oscillator so we're not hearing anything else. Mm. So we can just tell what's going on. So you've got three types. The first one is noise. Mm. So that's just white noise, basically. Sure. Yeah. And then you've got different types within each category. Yeah. So this is the type. So, you've got that low kind of noise. And also you've got already. What's the, what's the peak? Some kind of resonance thing? And then of course you've got your shape as well, just like on you analog. Which so it's kind of filtering, yeah, really. Yeah, sure. Um, that's really cool. I like that one. So that's your noises. Um, then you've got this one called VPN, uh, which is uh, digital. Um, waveforms basically, so sine waves. It's most similar to FM synthesis, I suppose. Sound. Yeah. This was something that surprised me when I read the manual. Like the, I, I sort of went into thinking that it was more like a standard digital oscillator, but when I started reading about it, I, yeah, it's like FM. Yeah. You have a lot of different uh, possibilities. To Especially when you start sound, shaping yeah. it, yeah. So um, if you go for something like. Talking, talking sound, sound, talking synth, same time, talking. Just wanted to throw that in. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Not to forget. Yeah. I mean, the thing that, that jumps out at me is that um, digital analog, this whole thing, is, is, is always confusing when you're talking to uh, people who are perhaps new to synthesis. Yeah, sure. yeah absolutely. Because uh, when you say digital oscillator, what I'm expecting to hear is that bit crushed kind of wavetable-y, jangly, jangly sort of sound. Mm. I'm not expecting to hear noise, for yeah. starters. Mm. I'm yeah. not expecting to hear um, what I would assume would be analog oscillators. And so when someone says, oh, there's a digital oscillator in there, it's automatically in my head going, oh, that's bad, that's going to be, <laughs> mm. um, oh, I don't know, like some other form of synthesis perhaps I'm not into. Yeah. When actually it can be anything. Yeah. It can, you know, because you're virtually analoging or you're modelling something. Yeah. It's just a very versatile oscillator as opposed to being a, a bad digital oscillator or mm. something that's, that's not into your analog vibe. Absolutely. And here the sound goes through the rest of the, the analog exactly. architecture. So, what, so once well. these three oscillators leave this section, yeah. if you like, they then go through all of the rest of the analog. Yeah, and, and then, then, then there's the, the yeah. envelopes and everything. And then there's digital the effects, yeah. Yeah, digital effects. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Um, so, so just talking a little bit about the, the shape. So is that different per... Uh, per type of... Uh... Yes, it is. It's been specifically designed, I think, to maximise, if you like, that waveform. Yeah. So... Again, that's very FM. Bringing in kind of different modulation. Um. So what I'm wondering is, is there any other way to change the parameters of the digital oscillator here on the... Uh... There's some more one uh, parameters which are hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you go into edit mode and then program edit, 
in one of these. Okay. I think we've got some extra little things. Here we go, multi-engine. So you've got feedback, yeah, yeah, yeah. noise depth, shape mod intensity, mod attack, mod decay, and mod key track. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so that, you can go way beyond even yeah, what's there. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty deep. I mean yeah. considering that it's just an additional oscillator. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's all sorry. Go ahead. So if, if somebody's watching this and wondering, well, we're not supposed to be talking while we're playing. We're very naughty. Yeah, we're yeah. very naughty. In this, in this beautiful, welcome to the Bow Beats uh, cabin. Um, it's, yeah. it's not haunted at all. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah. So, so with the feedback increase, we get this sort of yeah, saw-like saw sound, yeah, sound yeah. like on FM synth. Yeah, I know this because I just did a FM tutorial. <laughs> oh, there you are. Then. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. yeah. Otherwise, I w wouldn't have known it. Good timing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but the most interesting part, I think, of the multi engine is, is the user part. Yeah. So, obviously, the idea of it, although it's got these all these ones we've been listening to built in, it's also got the user. Mm which means it does come preloaded with one, um, but then you it's got 15 more slots, so you can load in custom oscillators. Is that limited Is that limited by the slots, or is there like a memory limit, or how does it I work? I think there is a memory limit, but um, I think generally speaking, the way that it's coded, because it's yeah. coded with C++, I yeah. think is a limit per um, how much an oscillator can be, if you see okay, it, in, okay, in size. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, 16 slots is, is enough, I think. Mm. And how many so, user oscillators are out there in the wild? Uh, the, they're, they're increasing all the time. So obviously, when the Prologue came out, because it's the same technology yeah. as the Prologue, um, we, since then, we're slowly starting to see um, developers getting on board with this. So we've actually got some preloaded already. Interesting. Here. So we can have a bit of a listen, if you like. For yeah? sure. Yeah. Let's do it. So if we go over with Turbo... So that's the basic waveform, and then if we start shaping it. So that, although it starts, it'll be different the way that it shapes from the, the preset, because they've yeah. done different stuff. And you can it. sequence shape changes as you well. You can, you can sequence yeah. anything on here. Yeah. So anything that's on the panel there, you can uh, motion record, we call it. And then when you press motion mode and you sequence it, it will show you... How many lanes are there? Four lanes yeah, four in lanes. total. So it's on the same as on the same as original. original. Yeah. Yes. But now we have this dedicated button as well. So this is something else that's new. You just mm. press that and then you can see your automation straight away. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was hidden really in the menus before? It was, yeah, it yeah. was, yeah. So now it's much more convenient because you just do that. And that's yeah, also sure. how you record. So you just press that. Hit record, and then anything that you move in will record in real time. Yeah, it's really so cool. it's dead easy. Um, so we, that's one new blinds is another one. <laughs> what that's doing when you look. I think there's some presets, patches, which have been loaded into here as well. Does the, is the shape predefined for that particular oscillator, or it, is it just a wave folder? Or? It's predefined, yeah. So okay. when they're programmed, that, yeah. the... So, but then you get... So for each of the, the custom oscillators, you also do you also get custom settings in the menu? So, um, like I, we should, you I show think, yeah, let's check, actually. So yeah, yeah, let's sure. see. So edit mode, because I've not seen one of these before. Yeah, sure. So... <coughs> Yeah, so that's totally different. Okay, yeah, so, so what do I have here? This is type. Uh, type, yeah. Sounds, and then you've got also ratio. harmonies on that one. Detune. Yeah, so we could you, you could basically look up 
I guess depending on who who is releasing the oscillator, you could probably look up exactly what all of this exactly does. yes yeah. they, they usually provide documentation with yeah. Yeah. with a list of what's happening in the menu, as well as some sounds that they made. Sometimes they make the uh, patches with it. So um, I think they said this on here. So turbo times up. So this is one, one using the turbo. <laughs> So yeah, that's um, that's how you kind of go through and select your user oscillators and uh, and shape them as well. Yeah. And don't forget, there's more. Parameters what kind of, what kind of questions pop into your mind? Uh, how do you make that happen? How do you <coughs> go from somebody's created an oscillator? How do I get it into my Korg? So um, it's coded in, uh, and then it's that that code is then loaded into our librarian software. Oh, okay. Which is a Korg piece of software. Yeah. Which is a piece of software you use to arrange all your patches and. And then you can also then load in these user oscillators from there, connected via USB to your computer. Great. And send it across. For some reason yeah. I was imagining imagining a cassette tape <laughs> <laughs> with a couple of cables to ear. And... You can do it that way if you like. Such probably. like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the process. So it's relatively simple. And are these uh, available for free or are they? I think there are some free ones and there's some paid ones as well. Right. So yeah, I know. Yeah. The, 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 can, can we do some we can do some promo? Yeah, I don't understand. I'm not. Just, Sure. I know Shine Vibes did this turbo one. Yeah, definitely. exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the one that I'm talking to. Sign Vibes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go check out Sign Vibes. Why not? Why <laughs> not plug them? Uh, no, but they they seem to be making cool stuff for and this. Al and also, I know in the UK, Dirtbox Synth have made some really yeah. nice ones as well. Yeah. So, yeah, there's well worth checking out for anyone who's thinking of getting a mini log or has one or a mini log XD, of course, mm. or a Pro Log as well because they're compatible mm. with both. Mm, yeah, 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 sure. And if you wanted to get into creating your own oscillator, is that developer level programming or? It's developer level programming, but I'm not a programmer, but apparently it's not too difficult. Okay. If you've kind of in that world, so. Yeah. yeah. Bow Beats, Minog XD, oscillator. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> you should do it. You should do it. Yeah, me and programming, mm, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not so much, not so much, you know, me and math, mm, not so much. <laughs> I'm better at drinking coffee and talking. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, maybe play a couple of keys. Um, yeah, could you show us a couple more sounds? Yeah, sure. Just general sounds. No, no, with, oh, the, with the, the user. The, I think with yeah. user oscillators. So this is a normal. Yeah. Bass violin. That's the turbo oscillator. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we just go to reverb, turn it on. Select the type. Yeah, do a submarine. Oh yeah, I like yeah, that one. Yeah, That's it. the one with the low frequencies. Yeah, yeah. It's like your go-to to thing. I was testing the Kyra down there and, and the Kyra, and it's like, oh uh, yeah, filter. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like it's like if the filter knob doesn't feel good, you know, it's yeah. That's you you worked you worked around it because it's all the same knobs. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Sign keys. Mm -hmm. So cool! It was like FM an FM synth rolled into yeah, exactly. That's what's amazing and, about it. And and that's also how like how interesting it is because sometimes those kind of things doesn't you know come through in the no. marketing I guess of a synth and and how we talk about it, yeah. especially since the legacy is the analog, since yeah. monologue and yeah. yeah yeah. I think this is really cool. Uh, and and since apparently digital hybrids are digital analog hybrids are all the rage right now. So. Yeah. It just cool. yeah, it just makes it uber versatile, really. Yeah, it's cool. So, yeah. Yeah, do, yeah we can do some yeah. more. Yeah, maybe 
you can do a little. I was going to say, yeah, bit. I was wondering whether he'd put yeah. a sequencer in there. Are you are you familiar, not. Robin, with the Minilogue or Monologue sequencers? No, not as such. Yeah, cool. No. So so let's dive into it. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's different ways to record. We can either just record in a step way. So it's now waiting for me to put a, a note in yeah. step one. So and then step two. I can rest as well, so I can miss out steps. So now. Can we can we also address address to be a little bit critical? Yeah. Why do you think it is that we get only a sixteen step sequencer in twenty nineteen? Um, it's a really good question. I do get asked that a lot, yeah. and um, it's the same thing with the Volkers because it kind of comes across from there as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, honestly, I don't know the hmm. answer. Um, I think part of it is what they were going for with the mini log and the monologue mm -hmm. and this, the simplicity of it. Sure. Trying to make it as simple as possible. Once you go beyond sixteen steps that you can actually see, mm. you've got the complication of oh, where's my next steps or sure sure um i think that's part of their thinking because yeah. and that's the same with the vault i know that was the concept with the yeah, volkers well, we're just going to throw it out there uh i think i i mean i can be wrong here but i do think that synth nerds can handle 32 and 64 steps yeah i think well, we can. it, it yeah. is possible yeah. <coughs> <laughs> although I, I i would say that uh, i mean i recently reviewed the analog solutions generator which yeah. is three rows of 16 nodes mm -hmm. And I tend to get lost after about twelve knobs. Yeah, I sure. tend to find myself bringing it back, bringing it back yeah. to four steps, to eight steps, yeah, yeah, and actually sure. I find that a, a very playful place. Yeah, yeah. If I think going beyond sixteen steps is is when you start moving into I'm writing a song, I'm writing yeah. A, yeah, something sure, which sure. is developing, yeah. and um, for it's me an that happens a lot less. Yeah. That yeah. happens a lot less than just playing around with. Four yeah, I think that steps, maybe you're you know. into something here because this is this is you know definitely aimed like a. a, a how I, I call a keyboardist, like mm. somebody, you know, that actually knows how to Place, play and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, you can use it to sound design, you can use it in the studio, but there's a, you know, there's a bit of a difference between this and, say, like an, the Electron stuff that I usually use. But a lot of my viewers uh, will definitely say that we want, we definitely don't want 16 steps in yeah. 2019. That That's a little bit of a challenge to Korg. So next time, you know, we want... 64 at least yeah. and we we can we can deal with the menu diving if it's something you have to set up i think mm. but uh so you can handle it it's fine yeah i think yeah. so yeah i think yeah. so i think i think a lot of people that's like a very big uh thing for for some people but i do i do get the point like i i don't i wouldn't say sometimes when i worked on the electrons i also uh just stick with uh, like the, the first um I think it's first eight steps i think no 16 steps yeah yeah and just stick with that and kind of work from it yeah but but sure yeah it depends on uh, you know, if you're prepared to learn a machine i suppose it's like lots of drum machines have multiple pages of, uh, of rhythms and because my experience of drum machines is usually at sort of shows and in the shop and so it's a very small amount of time. Yeah, sure. Uh, once it goes to the next page, I have no idea where I am or what's going on. <laughs> yeah, and so I yeah. like to have everything just running in front of me. Yeah. yeah but sure. once you start getting digging into a machine, then yeah. those you, sorts of things. On this machine, you could just have different. Of course, that's a little bit more money to the or, uh, the lighting under here. But you could have different lighting. So yeah. blue for the first yeah, sixteen, true. red. Yeah, so you That'd can be have, quite neat. Yeah, yeah. And, but I do get it because, for example, Novation Circuit. You know, they, they've added more and more features, of course. But with features come. come Complexity yeah. and makes it less. It's finding accessible. that balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah for is, sure, for sure. And also, you know, you can um, change the resolution as well. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. Make it, yeah. To make it play harder, slower, slower, yeah. slow, or, you know, whatever. Ah, um, so you were you were talking about how kind of recording. Yeah, so we've recorded a little pattern. So if we want to record some motion into that, all you have to do is press motion mode. Oh, yeah. um, so we've got. Oh, what can we do? Which is interesting. So, so I wanted to record a little bit of attack, mm -hmm. a difference yeah. during the sequence. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is it kick, it I overwrote it. Yeah. How does that happen? Why Be do I make that happen and how do I make that not happen? Because when you press record normally, it'll do one cycle and then stop recording. Mm. Mm. Oh, I pressed it so again. So I think you pressed it again, so therefore you started recording again. Let's do that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I saw you looking for something funny to tweak, and I, I'm glad you didn't go for the filter, but I'm gonna go for the filter. <laughs> yeah, um, go for it. Yeah. In this case, it's probably sent to the envelope. Yeah, but you could you yeah. could do like. Um, like yeah. So say we wanna say we wanna do more like um, yeah. Per, per step motion yes. editing? How do yeah. you do that? So we've filled up all the lanes now. Um, so let's just clear that, shall we? Sure. We'll, I'm not sure. sure how to do that. We'll keep the sequence, but we'll get rid of the motion. So you can enable it here. Okay. So there's four uh, parameters at one time in one sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, or you can turn them off. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. Motion clear. So if I clear, say, the resonance. So that, now was, that was your stuff. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, so I ruined it. Damn. <laughs> you didn't get the, the, the Luke from Korg approval. Uh, sorry, I'm I used, loved it. I'm used to things being transient, man. You just pulled, pulled my patch out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Rip yeah. it all apart. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've now got one lane free. So if we wanted to, say, step in some stuff mm -hmm. apart, um, you can just hold down that step while um, you're in yeah. motion mode. Yeah. So that that actually that was the shape that you did. So that's altering what you did there. You see oh. it moving? Can you see it moving? No. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can see. Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Cool. Cool. So let's pick a totally different parameter. Um, let's find one that's going to make a difference to the sound. So maybe a cross mod. Yeah, you can try it. Oh, so if I sort of put a few of those in, yeah, you can see that appearing now. So so you can you can get some really interesting effects. Yeah, um, yeah. happening per step. Yeah, I think I think that's why that. I think that that's why I and some others go to like the whole getting longer. Sequences mm. and sixteen steps, yeah. because of the powerful hands-on automation of, of or mo motion sequencing yeah. of these knobs. So like it's, it's so cool, um, and it's also like, it's not with the whole, it's not a lot of menu diving or anything. And I think that's really like something that appeals to me. So something that was quite clever in some of the presets is by using the arpeggiator, mm -hmm. you can get that kind of slow evolving thing. Mm -hmm. Let me just yeah, see find an example. Okay. So I can explain that to you because I quite like that. Uh, did you did you get everything with, with the sequencer? Was there yeah. any like any other <coughs> question you had? About Super that? easy. Yeah, no, yeah. no, that that works really quick. Yeah. So this one, for instance, here, um, this is an arpeggiated patch. So if you just play a bunch of notes. sequence but each step can be a different chord so mm. therefore yeah, yeah, yeah. you can get this oh, kind of right. happening so this is just the preset one that comes with it but it explains what you what you mean So you can have something. 
Is it, ru is it running at what resolution now? It's it will be slow. running very slow, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can tell you actually, if you're looking at it. Uh, one over one. Yeah, yeah, one so over one. So it's the yeah, slowest. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Because so you could do a really, you could do a very slow chord progression with with yeah. or without arpeggiators. Yeah, well. that's right. Yeah, it doesn't have to be with the arpeggiator. Yeah, it sure. could just be chords. Yeah, yeah. And then it'll at a very slow tempo, and it'll just evolve. Yeah. Um, so that's quite neat. You can even put a, a sequence of motion into the sequencer. Yeah, sure. Without yeah. any note data. So then, when you just start it, play. Yeah. And then that will just slowly evolve that, your sound as well. Actually, that's amazing. actually a really cool trick and yeah. the thing mm. that worked with, I think, with monologue and minologue yeah. as well. The whole recording the motion, yeah, the motion sequence. Just and data, then, but yeah, no notes. And then, yeah. and then hit play and play something. Yeah. Right. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, can we yeah. do it? We can just do it. Do it yeah, yeah. And, if you want. Uh, yeah, so just let's find a different it. sound. Uh, so let's go for something like. For sort of... Yeah, that's fine. There's already is no there... data, yeah. No, there no. is, yeah. So we need to clear, clear that. It, yeah. uh, this is quite cool. If you hold down shift, it tells you the shortcuts. Ah, uh -huh, okay, okay. So yeah. shift rest is sequence clear. Sure. So it's now completely blank. Ah, uh, okay. I don't remember if there was that sort of thing on the original. No, I think so. you could do it. Yeah, but it I could do didn't maybe. tell you the shortcuts. Yeah, I never really, learned them. Yeah, no, no. I think it's the same shortcut. Yeah, shift yeah, rest, yeah, shift clear. Cool. So now we're it's cycling through, but there's nothing in there at the moment. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can see. Um, so we could just do a little. Yeah, so we could. Yeah, so we can just do. So now we're recording. Yeah, and if I start to turn another knob. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. This is gonna sound strange because now it's been built. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always gonna mess about. Turn a knob. I'm just gonna mess about here. Oh, we're turning the knobs. Three blows. Turning oh, the knobs. Oh, we maxed it out. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> we broke it again. Uh, That's okay. So. Now, if I press, that's what I wrote in on the filter, for example. So now, hopefully, if I play that, no notes. But if I stop, Of ten knob <laughs> turning from yeah, us. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it's 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 clear as, as day here on the screen. Like you see, Luke's very nice. You know, company you're like... company representative. He knows how to turn the knob like in a, in a nice way, selling the synth. And we are still straight in there. Bam! Yeah. Let's do the cross mod depth. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, it looks like we are. Short on time, yeah. but uh, did, this has we, been great. did we yeah. go over what we set out to go over, you think? I think mainly we did, yeah. I think, yeah, uh, yeah we had, we've had a look at the multi-engine and differences really between this is this and the original Minilog. Yeah. Uh, we dived in and looked at the sequencer. Yeah, and just kind of side things off, there's a few uh, other differences beside the multi-engine. For example, you only have the AD here. Yeah, on the monologue on, you do, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. On, the, it's, uh, on the original Minilog you have the ADSR right Yeah. Here. Yes. And here's only AD exactly yes. for uh, the envelope generator. Yeah, right. So it's just yeah, it's just a two part. The filter's actually generator. different here as well. Yeah, sure. So this is filters derived from the Prolog. Yeah. And you have Drive now as well, which yeah. we didn't have before. So that's quite nice. Yeah, and you can't. So here's another thing I didn't really get. I didn't read up on it much, but you yeah. can't use the EG to the LFO anymore, right? No, no, because these are the destinations. Yeah, yeah, I sort of missed that. To be honest, I, I, that was one omission, one change I didn't like. Yeah. To be honest, I, yeah. I, I mm. you used that. On the yeah, that yeah. was a really cool thing. Uh, if I if I explain it correctly, you could you know you set the EG to make the LFO come in. Say right. with a long attack, yeah. You, yeah. you get the LFO come in, and when you then set the LFO to pitch, you get this sort of uh, stable, and the the the, the pitch um, the vibrato comes in like 
Mm, slowly. Mm-hmm. Very nice. It's very nice because yeah. you can make some really. Some of my patches I made that people liked about it was with that effect or that interaction. So you can have it quite static for a while. And yeah, then and then have a little bit of yeah. vibrato, for example. Yeah, it comes in, in yeah. after a little while. That's yeah, really nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah, so that's a difference for sure. And yeah. of course, the effect section is quite yeah, different as well. Massively upgraded. Yeah. Um, three simultaneous effects, whereas yeah. you've only got on the mini log, you've only got the one kind of space echo. Do you have type. any like? Last questions or thoughts? If you were to jump from this to the prologue, is it? Do you get four of these in a box, or is it? Is it a huge difference, or is this a a good pretender? It's it's different because the prologue has some things which this doesn't have, but this has some things that the prologue doesn't okay. have. Okay. For instance, this has a sequencer. The prologue yes. doesn't have a sequencer. Yeah, 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 enough, yeah. So for some people, this would actually suit them better than mm, the prologue, mm, even though yeah. it's less expensive. Obviously, it's got less polyphony. Yes. So you've only got four notes. Yeah. So if you're into, you know, anything that where you need more, like bigger pads and things, massive pads, yeah, yeah, and stuff like that. The Prologue Eight and especially the Sixteen comes into its own. The Prologue Eight and Sixteen are also by Timbrel, so it means you can stack two engine, two of these effectively on top of each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, so instead cool. of three oscillators, you've got six effectively. Yeah, that's cool. So you can do splits and layers. So I'm sitting here doing gang signs to <laughs> our producers because we're at Tom and Synth Reactor. And yeah, thank you so much, Luke, for uh, taking the time. It's the first time we meet. It's amazing. We've yeah, done that's real. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's mine now. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll just turn the blind on to that. And yeah. Robin, thank you so much <laughs> Thanks, for, for coming. I, I, You're welcome. Guys, I just kind of grabbed these guys and said, let's do a video. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, so thank you so much for, for watching. Uh, be sure to head over to Molten Modular's YouTube channel. I'll be sure to link it down below. And you can also go and check out my unboxing, my kind of first little look, first uh, hyped over reaction, a lot of woo wah mm. about the Minilog XT. So thank you so much nice. for uh, being here and we'll say our goodbyes. Bye bye. Uh-huh. Cheerio. Cheerio. Okay, that's time for beer. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. That was the best video of the event so far. <laughs> <laughs>